where do you see dentistry go? You have your hands in quite a few projects and um, you guys are on the forefront of creating a new way to connect, you know, doctors and connect staff and everything. And it's really exciting. So I'd love to hear your, your insight. Thank you. I see dentistry shifting in many directions. What I've noticed in the past is every decade had some sort of consolidation that went through it. So like originally it was the distributors, the dental distributors getting consolidated, Henry Schein and Patterson and Banco Dental were going and buying up all the small dealers and you ended right. up with like the big five. Then the next era, the manufacturers came and consolidated and dent supply came and bought this guy out for that amount of money and that guy out. And right. during that time you had an acceleration of the DSOs coming and consolidating private practices. But I think all, all this consolidation, that's been like the theme, right? In dentistry, things have just been consolidating. Yeah. And I think all this though is, is going to, it's, it's bound to plateau because dentists are too in, independent minded of, of thinkers out there. I don't, there is a standard of care. The standard of care doesn't really get debated that often, but how they do a class one filling or the experience of the guy doing a molar endo, it's always going to differ from dentist to dentist. Yeah. And in medicine, it's much more straightforward. The guy comes in for your, 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 your common denominator that you're trying to leave with the patient is a diagnosis and a cure. Right. With, with dentistry, it's, it's a bit more of a craft. And so th th that's what kind of breeds that whole independent thinking. I see a whole world of mentorship coming about. I do see a lot of more schools opening up. Yeah. I hear it on Facebook. It's so funny. Every time like a new school gets opened up, I think to myself, man, the millions of dollars that probably got poured into this thing. And there's people all over Facebook saying, great, another dental school that we need. We really don't need it. <laughs> like, of course we need more access to care. Like yeah, one of the biggest problems in dentistry, I think in America today is that it's just underserved in many parts. Like I remember when I used to field phone calls for paradental the agency for in-house specialists, there was like one call that came in from Erie, Pennsylvania, and they're looking for an endodontist. Mm -hmm. She's like, the office manager is like, I'm willing to give up a hundred percent of the production to any GP that comes and does the endo or mm -hmm. any endodontist. The nearest endodontist we refer to is an hour and a half away. Wow. And what we've been doing, because the patients don't want to go that far, they've just been opting to extract their teeth. So mm -hmm. you just end up with this whole population of middle-aged people with indentual sites walking around. Right. And like we're in America, right? Is that really supposed to happen? You know, yeah. I don't think so. Like every state has an insurance program. I think insurances need a, a complete overhaul, both in terms of the understanding of how dentists operate within PPO or HMO based insurances, and also in terms of how they're, they're, they're paying out things. It's, mm -hmm. It's too complicated for dentists to understand. So good for you guys, right? Because the complication leads to them to suffer. So that they're like, you know what? I might as well not do this because I wasn't trained in it. So I'm going to go team up with a DSO that could do it better than me. Right. I think there's a lot of pain points out in dentistry that won't be solved by the private practitioner. There's just not enough time in the day. Mm -hmm. And the, the DSO management support is always going to be needed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of practice owners, I think, are going to have in the back of their mind that day is going to come that they should sell to the DSO. And there's a decent chunk of practice owners that say to themselves, I don't need a, a, a backup system. My office manager is going to live and die by me for the rest of my life. And she manages everything. And I'm happy doing a million a year in production. Yeah. And that's fine too. Yeah. But that, that, that goes back to what I was saying, where dentistry is like very independent thinking and it's, although it's been like going through one consolidation after another, I think it's mainly kind of gone that route because it's so fragmented. There's so many different thoughts and approaches to it from diagnosing to manufacturing. You're right. Yeah. It's a very dynamic industry. Yeah. It is. I've never done anything else other than dentistry before. Since I was 18, I've just been in dentistry. It's and a great profession to be in on either side of it. It's a very secure, reliable resilient industry and true i think it's I, 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 at least that's going to continue right like overall dentistry is a very safe place to be and it's a necessary place to be, right it's it's doing an amazing service and one thing that's really exciting 
because I I'm kind of the health nut is the, the connection between overall wellness and health and oral health. And that school of thought has becoming more and more accepted and more apparent from all the parts of the industry where you have to have good oral health in order to have good systemic health. And there's been a lot of diseases and issues that were kind of downstream of, you know, what starts in your mouth will, will happen throughout the rest of your body. So there's a lot of synergy between dentistry and medical that's becoming a little bit more accepted and there's a little bit more attention put to that. So that's, that's something I'm really excited about too. I agree. I think oral systemic health is, has just the awareness of that has gone up, especially with what's happened to co- you know, with COVID hitting us and right. the periodontist that I started periodontal with Dr. Sherman Malayam, when COVID first came out, he did this webinar that we helped host in front of a dental association in Southern California. A couple hundred people showed up. He was postulating that the IL-6 factor in perio disease is the cause of COVID and COVID enters the body through the gum line. Wow. And that, yeah, you know, what I was telling you, he's a visionary. This guy's a visionary. <laughs> and there was many, many, there were many other periodontists and hygienists that independently came and thought of that too afterwards. And there was like many studies that started coming about from it. Really right. intriguing. Yeah, I'll share the episode in the library archive somewhere, but he basically, he broke it all down. Is there a possibility probably that COVID does enter through the gum stream? I don't know. I, that's for science to decide inconclusively. <laughs> yeah. And that's always changing too, because as doctors get smarter and scientists kind of look at things from other angles and new technology comes out for diagnosis and exploring different things that have been explored. Um, you learn new things. And Absolutely. Hypotheses are always being re-questioned, which is, you know, the whole point of a good science uh, approach anyway. Absolutely. Thomas, thank you so much for joining us today. I enjoyed this talk. It was very thought inspiring, to be honest with you. Yeah, it was really intriguing and exciting to learn and just kind of discuss what's been going on recently in, in this fun industry that we're in. Absolutely. And thanks for all the support. Uh, you were definitely a, a good ally to meet when I first landed in New York to build the whole footprint for cloud dentistry out here. And yeah, it definitely spiked my interest to hear what your ideas were and why you're out here from the West Coast. And I was like, wow, that's such a perfect niche to fill. And, you know, we hit it off. And like I said before, it's the relationships that you build and I'm happy to happy to have have built a good one with you and excited to see where we're going in the future. Feelings mutual. How how can people get a hold of you if they're interested in speaking with you about possibly selling their practice? Yeah. I mean, I'll post up my cell number, my email, but it's uh, Thomas P at the smilest.com or just check out our website, my information on the website, the smilest.com. We've been growing, so we're not too hard to find. Awesome. I love it. So good talking to you today. Thanks so much. Yes, my pleasure, Darius. Take care.